Hi, I'm Seth Merrifield. I'm a system architect at Lockheed Martin, and I'm here to talk to you about space logistics in 2050. So, as we look over here, one of the things we can see is some of the satellites that we're envisioning for the future of space. And the, the, that's the what of what we're talking about here. You've got, you know, defense spacecraft, you've got remote sensing spacecraft, and you've got communication spacecraft. And that, that offers you a glimpse at the kind of technologies that we're looking at, the kinds of applications we want to get after. But it's all supported by, in 2050, a whole, a whole space industry that supports that. So in, in the current era, in 2022, what we've got is a terrestrially based kind of uh, supply chain where it starts with material extraction, development of resources, manufacturing, assembly, test, launch, and then you finally get a spacecraft into orbit. In 2050, what we're looking at is essentially replicating that whole process and putting it in space. The benefit of doing that is that you're able to reduce the time between needing a satellite and getting it in mission. So if you're an operator, you have a pressing need for a satellite, it lets you shrink the entire supply chain down. So you locate your resources with your manufacturing facilities, with your production facilities, to let you get the mission faster. This is exciting for a lot of reasons, but it also poses a lot of problems. You've got four main problems that you have to solve to do this that we're working on today. One problem is how do you get resources in outer space? This is the very baseline question you have to figure out. One way is satellite recycling. If you can take a satellite that's on orbit, you can shred it apart, turn it into raw material, and you can then use it for the second problem. The second problem is how do I take raw material and create stuff from it? How do I turn it into a material stock how do I turn that material stock into devices? So that's step number three, taking the raw material that you've, you've like recycled from a satellite, turning it into you know, a, an ingot of you know, metal, an ingot of polymer, and then taking that to your next step and turning it into things that are useful, like chips or satellite structures. And at this point, you get to start thinking about how you apply all of this to the missions that are out there and what kind of exciting things you might want to do with it. So, one thing that you're not beholden to anymore if you adopt this kind of paradigm is you don't have to build spacecraft that do launch anymore. You can build something that is a native space vehicle. So it's like the true evolution of where space is supposed to go. And that's really the final step for all of this is you've gone through, you've extracted your materials, you've created your, your products out of it, you've made your piece parts, and you assemble it into something that's useful that you can use in space. And so these are some of the ideas we've got. Let's start that again. See, these are some of the ideas we've got, is you'll need to provide defense in space. You'll need it to have a lot of systems on there that we're investigating today. The remote sensing mission is as important as ever, and in 2050 we expect it'll be even more so. There are a lot of exciting technologies that if you build something in space, you can unlock. So things like uh, combining, the, combining the types of imagery and payloads, imagery and communication payloads that you have into a single device, that might be possible in the future, and it's something we're really excited about. And finally, looking at you know, communications, the communications and imagery missions might blend together. So you end up with a single spacecraft that does both, or that does primarily one or primarily another, depending on the needs of the mission. And that is the exciting part about Space 2050, is it's the mission you need when you need it.